61 Jamie James at 19 to 21 Great Portland Street, full floor, no lift. <laughs> it was my job to stand there while she made the clothes off me, saw how they fell and how they hung, sat in front of a mirror. I had my hair quite sort of shortish, I seem to remember, because there was a, a sort of Mary Quant. It was a Vidal Sassoon short kind of Mary Quantish look, and she quite liked that. It looked quite boyish. Well, at once I bought a wig and put it on, a long yellow wig, and she went, oh, my dear, oh, my dear. So I took it off again quickly. I used to stand there while the buyers came in from America, and I'd have to stand in a tiny space. I mean, we're not talking about show. We're talking about virtually a cupboard. I mean, it's no as you know, it's some coffee or some champagne, and somebody from of Saks Fifth Avenue would be sitting there, or Geraldine Stutz or somebody amazing like this looking at the things while I swapped rounds. And look, this is actually, this is not from them, but this is, this is 40 years old, this coat. I'm just gonna step away from the microphone so you can see the back of it. Yes, I think so, don't you? I mean, just fantastic. Anyway, I stayed at this mill, strangely enough, only for three months, but long enough to know what respect she had for the workroom staff. And we've got Faye here, who's one of the finest finishers ever Miss Muir had. She cared so much about the staff, the people who work for her, the people who made things like these silver things, this little bracelet here. Things she looked at people who would do the finest knitting. She went to Harris and Lewis to get Harris tweed. She went to those, those women in the, in the Outer Hebrides somewhere who did gossamer knitting. She loved craftsmanship. She respected craftsmanship. And that's why she rejected the title designer and loved dressmaker. She liked people who did things. And so when she came here, I came with her only as an occasional model for her fabulous shows. And it was just a privilege. It wasn't, I don't even remember, Ross, were we ever paid? I suppose we were. Well, not much, no. Not much ever paid, actually. I mean, even when I was a house model, it was only 10 quid a week. But nevertheless, I would have done it for paying her 10 quid a week. And I'd appear in my awful Etam coat or something and try to leave it behind because it only got three quid. And you'd get into these sensational clothes. And she instilled in me a love for things that are really fine. You don't always have to wear them or have them or own them, but you must recognize them. She was the top of the top. Now here, when she came to 22 Bruton Street, there seemed to be a sort of clique, and we called ourselves the Murettes, Ros, which was people who simply adored her openly we loved her we loved the fact that in london she only wore navy blue i mean we're talking chic do you know what i mean she might have had a little bit of brown shoes but it was navy blue um we used to come here to watch to be in the shows Roz and me there's a gorgeous picture of marilyn stafford look of us sitting in our sad undergarments quite often we wouldn't wear bras for her clothes because she was very advanced we would just wear these beautiful heavy silk jersey clothes sitting on the floor in our black tights our dancer's hair, which was all scraped back, dark eyes, just no champagne. We did. As the photograph has us clutching little glasses of champagne. Just put it. Champagne, darling. I think champagne, champagne, champagne. And then she looked at us. Oh, I think we're ready. And Harry would have put on some jazz, something smoochy and cool. And then we would just walk out. It wasn't really like walking as they do catwalks now, because people were practically sitting on your lap. You were there with people, and sometimes Miss Hill would say, Johnny, darling, 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 tell them who made the hat. Say, say, say. And I thought, well, don't make sure say, say who made the hat. So you'd have to go out and hurt the sink. And Jack Smith made the hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ross, it was fun, wasn't it? We loved it. And then sometimes the Murettes would be allowed back to buy her clothes and sales, because quite a lot of us didn't have much money, but we loved her things. And we'd all be upstairs in tragic undergarments saying, that looks divine, you must get that. You know, watch this, does that look good? Do you think that was this? And we'd got bundles of clothes and put them on the bed at home and think, I'm in paradise. Now, her collection has gone to Scotland. I was lucky enough to be there when she handed over, with Harry handing the whole collection. She wasn't there, it was after she had died, wasn't it? She, I was up there with Harry and the whole thing went to the Museum of Scotland and I thought, my God, that's something. But to be here in Bruton Street and to know that there's a blue flag that has been dedicated to her is the absolute business. And so although we, those of us who knew her, will never forget that she's an immortal, she's a legend. Now this shows that Jean Muir is actually forever part of history. It makes me so proud to be here with you all today, with all the other speakers, and to be here with this string, which I'm now going to do, and I know it's going to pull the purple ribbon. My greatest pride and honor is to 
unveil the plaque to Team Mule, the best of the very best. Woo!